So welcome everybody, welcome to, um, this is Energy Play Shop number 19. And today is the 15th of September, 2022. Oh my gosh, we're already in the middle of September. How time flies. And um, so Energy Play Shop tonight, we're gonna talk about how to access universal truth. Um, that's kind of the, the journey that we've been on for all this September. I've been talking about how to, um, that there are actually two major energy pathways within the human body. We have uh, Kundalini, which is more the, the human energy pathways. And then we have the central meridian, which is the path, the, the um, pathways for universal energy to come into our body. And um, currently the, the, the central meridian and the Kundalini are not too close together. The, the central meridian is of course, it's like the, uh, a tube that's in the middle, that runs in the middle of our body. And the um, Kundalini is kind of closer to the back of our body, um, kind of almost into our spine. So the, there's that difference in energy. And when we combine, when we merge these two major energy pathways, then we actually have um, access to to really know more of the truth and to start to activate our own innate powers. And I've been talking about, you know, how to, how to merge the two major energy pathways. And that's the, um, what we, we did last week. And this week, I'm gonna specifically talk about how do we actually um, get to find out what to, how to know the truth, the universal truth, not just, truth in, in on, on planet earth not the truth and not just the truth that we kind of know in our um like 3d level kind of um, human body level of truth but truth that is more profound than us that is beyond us how do we actually um, access those truths so that is the the, the main parts of this so as always, I actually want to um, maybe actually let's just go into the the presence meditation because after presence presence meditation, I'm going to um, talk a little bit, just give a very quick review of what we talked about, how to merge the central meridian and the kundalini together and then if there's any questions about what we've done in um, around that and what we've covered in previous weeks then i'll ask for questions at that time and then we'll talk about levels of truth they are actually levels of truth so and how do we get to each of those levels of truth and then talking about how do we get the universal truth so we actually have access to anything that we put our mind to and put our heart to so but for now let's just do the presence meditation so for the presence meditation let's just all take a deep breath in And let it all go. Take another deep breath in. And let it all go slowly. Take one more deep breath in. And let it all go 
slowly. Continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. And as you breathe in, just imagine that you are breathing in pure love. Pure love from the creator source. And as you breathe out, let go of anything that does not support you in this moment. And just continue to give yourself time to take in a few more breaths with each breath. Bring in more of the pure, pure love from the creator source. And as you breathe out, allow your shoulders, your whole body to just relax. Let go of any tension, any anxiety, anything that does not support you to be in this moment right now. And if you need to, then adjust your posture to allow yourself to really become very comfortable and relaxed. And as you breathe in, start to call back all parts of yourself, back into yourself. Call back all of your attention. Be very, very selfish in this moment. Only focus on yourself. Focus on yourself and focus on this moment. When you really focus in this moment and on yourself, you'll find that it is actually very easy to have no thoughts. It's only when we are not in this moment, when we are not in ourselves, that we have thoughts. We think about what we're going to do tomorrow or what we've done earlier today. But right now, let all of those thoughts go and simply be with yourself. Be within yourself. Be within your heart. With yourself in this moment. Place your focus in your heart. And simply notice that. Notice this moment. Be completely here for yourself in this moment. And when you focus on your heart, you are actually also connected to your soul. And now intentionally intentionally connect with the highest vibration version of you that you have access to in this moment. Just have that intention. that you want to be connected to that version of yourself, the highest 
vibration version of yourself that you have access to right here, right now. And when you feel, when you truly feel that deep connection within yourself, feel that connection to a part of you that is beyond this physical body. When you feel that, then come back. Bring your attention back into the room. And just take a deep breath in. Let it all out. And open your eyes to be ready. If you haven't opened your eyes yet. So welcome back, everybody. As I have mentioned that we're going to have a very brief kind of a summary of what we've talked about in last week, mostly. And actually, let me just um, okay. So this is our this is this week. So the last couple of weeks we've talked about Kundalini. So what is Kundalini? Kundalini is really energy from the body from central meridian and also from earth. It is almost inside the spine because of the tilt of the earth. The earth is on a, an axis. It's not just straight up and down, north to south, up and down. Uh, it's a little bit tilted. So because of that tilt, so that tilt kind of affected the way our kundalini energy is. And kundalini spins clockwise. That's the spin of the energy. And kundalini is also about how we experience life on earth. That's why the tilt of the earth is able to influence the kundalini. So kundalini is one of the two major energy pathways that is that goes through our body. And the other one is the central meridian. Central meridian is really energy from source, from the creator source, from outside of Earth. So from source, especially the Milky Way, and it is also from Earth as well, because Earth is a part of source. So, and central meridian spins anti-clockwise. And it is also the controller of our consciousness. The way the central meridian, um, the, the quality of the energy that goes through it actually triggers the, our consciousness to rise or drop. So that is what, part of the, the central meridian. And last week we talked about merging the, the central meridian and the kundalini. So why do we want to merge the two? It's because when we merge those two, we actually can have access to more of the energy and the information that um, comes in from the central meridian. 
And so the way that we, we can merge those, these two major energy pathways is through our breath, of course. So we do the in-breath. When we breathe in, we have the intention that we want to breathe in pure love from ECH, which is um, energy center eight. Energy center eight is about eight inches above uh, the top of our head. And that is where um, the, the three, the third dimension energy plane is. So when we pull in, pull in pure love from this energy center number eight, we pull it into the seventh and then pull it in all the way down to the base of our spine. And actually energy centers number one is about four inches below our perineum. So as on the out breath, what we do is we pull up energy from earth in the frequency of 0 0.01 from the first chakra, which is our perineum, all the way up to the seventh chakra to the top. So they, the, the in-breath and the out-breath, they pull in different energy. And the seventh chakra is at the, it's at the top of our head, about well, slightly to the back of our head and where all the different, the, the about three bones in our, in our skull that comes together and the place where it comes together, there, it's a special spot that is the seventh chakra. So we do that by um, ticking five count, meaning we count up to five as we breathe in and then as we breathe out is count of five to breathe out, meaning that so in each breath is 10 seconds. So if we take six breaths, it's equal to one minute and we rest for 15 seconds. Why do we rest? It is because um, when we are breathing like this, our energy actually, when we're breathing like this, we are actually raising the vibration within our body, raising our, our vibration so that um, that 15 seconds is really allowing us to allow the body to catch up, to start to integrate that these higher levels of energy within that. And so this um, breathing in, breathing in five count, breathing out five count six times, which makes it uh, to 60 seconds and then 15 seconds is to rest. So that is one cycle. And if we do five or maybe 10 cycles, it really depends on each person. If you, in some people, maybe five cycles, they would feel that there's a big shift, there's a big enough shift in the energy. However, some people, they may need to do up to 10 in order to feel that big shift of energy. And we need that big shift of energy because this, this energy that you bring in is the energy that is going to um, energize your Kundalini and your central meridian. And you really want to, the, 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 the idea is to strengthen these two energy pathways within yourself before you start to merge them. So especially the central meridian, because um, um, the, the eight center is be like eight inches above our head. And, and um, the first energy center is four inches below. So these points are beyond our body. If we don't strengthen it, we actually don't quite feel it in, in, with our, in our body. So when we start to strengthen our, the central meridian using these breathing in five counts and out 
five counts, this, this um, breathing, we start to um, grow the, each of the centers within the central meridian. And we do that with our Kundalini as well to make sure that each of our center, um, our chakra within the Kundalini is strong and balanced. And when each of these two major pathways are separately strong and balanced, when you mix it, um, when you put them together, they actually work <clears throat> better together. Whereas if, you, if your um, kundalini or your central meridian are not balanced, then they kind of distort each other. So you want to make sure that independently, each of those two um, energy pathways within your body are strong and ba in balance. So let's continue to um, look at. So then when you feel both the central meridian and the Kundalini is strong and you've activated each one of them, then you have them to become coherent with each other. So then you combine these two together, have them coherent first, which means that the energy works with each other and then you merge them. And so that's where we started. That's where we ended um, last week. So any questions about this process before? So this is just a quick review of what we covered last week. So any questions about that before I continue with new material? Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. First of all, hello to everyone. Uh, Hi there. I, I just wanted to ask, 0 0.01, I thought it's going from ORS, but now you said it's from first chakra, right? So where it's starting? From first chakra or from ORS? It comes from Earth, but it enters your body through the first chakra. So it doesn't go through the feet? Um, it does go through the feet. There are several, okay. Um, it does go to the, first, to the first chakra as well, but it also comes through the, the soles of your feet because there are these, there are also two um, major energy center at the soles of your feet, and also two that is coming from the back of your knees. So those are the supplementary ones, but they all feed into the, the, the first chakra. Okay, got it. Okay, yeah, there, but there, there are actually many, um, many energy pathways through our body. I forgot, um, let's see, the, the um, Chinese medicine has, there's about, about 40, about around 40. Um, they've identified around 40 different um, energy pathways in our, in our body. And that's the major ones. There are also minor ones that, that so there are actually a lot of energy that comes in our body. So when I say the seven chakras, I am really simplifying it very much, a, a lot actually. So that's why, yes, there are energy centers that's from the soles of our feet. That's why when we, when we do this, um, actually the recommendation is that we stand up because when we when we sit down, we actually the the chair that we sit on it actually um, becomes a barrier. So it, it it cuts off a little bit of energy that's coming in through the the perineum and also from the um, central meridian, the EC one as well. When we stand up, though, there's no um, 
there's actually nothing that's blocking that pathways to come in. So it's actually easier to get yourself into a higher frequency when you're standing up. Not that you can't sit down. You There will still be some energy coming in. It's just not as much as when you are standing up. So. Okay. Thank and, you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, great. So let's start to talk about new material today. So as I already mentioned, today we are talking about... Um, how to access universal truth. So let's talk about the levels of truth first. Okay, so there are, from the, from the human point of view, there are a few levels of truth. So first one is at the third dimension level, which is really the earth, like the 3D level. So, so um, pretty much, where most people are at the, the third dimension level, you can still get at a version of truth here when you merge both the, the Kundalini and the central meridian. Because when you do that, then EC7, which is the energy center, and number six, which is around the third eye, when that spins clockwise, because EC6 usually spins anti-clockwise because EC6 is part of the central meridian. However, when you merge the two, when you merge uh, Kundalini and central meridian, then it spins clockwise. The central meridian will start to spin clockwise. And you will feel that, that the top of your head is just spinning clockwise. It's no longer spinning anti-clockwise. It's actually spinning clockwise. So when you merge the two and you are still um, in, in your consciousness is still at the 3D level, then you would have some, you would have a version of truth. But the answer is usually not 100% trustworthy. And especially if you haven't quite um, clean up your emotions okay? because at the human level, even here, if you, um, for example, if your Kundalini is stronger than your central meridian, if the energy pathway is stronger, there is still a lot of emotions because within the Kundalini, that's our emotion, our human side, it has emotions in it. So that's why we want to make sure that the central meridian is actually strong as well. Um, it's actually better to have the central meridian being stronger than the Kundalini. And so when we do that, when we merge these two at the 3D level, we have a version of truth, but it's not 100% trustworthy. So it really depends. And however, when we go beyond the dimension, meaning that we go beyond the speed of light, which means that we are at least in the fourth dimension, which means 16 inches, there's a plane of energy that is 16 inches above our head. When we draw our energy and our consciousness from this from at least the, the, the fourth dimension, we will feel actually that the, when we have both the Kundalini and the central meridian merged together, we feel actually the whole head will spin clockwise. And our intuition would be very strong. And so you, so this is truth. So when you ask questions in this state, you would know the truth. And this truth, however, has no, um, there's no information about past life information. So meaning that it is, it is truth, but the still is not the, the it's, a, um, it's not the universal truth. It is your truth, but not the universal truth. So now, when we actually 
go even higher up when we make sure that we are at so how do we know that we are at the universal consciousness it's when we feel that our whole head is spinning and we actually feel energy coming down from our head all the way into our heart space then we know that we are connected to the universal consciousness and the truth that we get whatever answer we get when we are here it is the we are actually drawing the answer from the universal consciousness database and it's a hundred percent trustworthy and it has all of the other um it includes all the past and future life information so that's the three levels of truth questions so far yes can i ask questions absolutely yes. go right ahead so i don't understand the difference between um, second and third okay so second and the the only difference is that um when you it's really the amount of energy because when you only feel it in your head when you only feel that your head is spinning it's still not connected to your heart but when you are actually connected to your heart head and heart both connected and you also connected to the um, universal truth then everything will come together and you would actually be able to tap into the universal akashic record universal truth that's how many inches how, how many inches about the head it's 16 no that's it's um it's not about that it's not about is it's not about how many inches above your head is about as long as you're beyond the speed of light meaning that you are at least fourth dimension and you the energy actually flows into your heart it's not just your head it actually you connect it to your heart How we do that is that command, so heart, brain and heart coherence activate? So that actually means that you need to really do some work with yourself to open your heart. Um, so, yeah, you really have to do some work to open your heart. So that you're, so you're really connected to your heart as well. You're not just know the truth from your head you actually connect it to your heart can i ask you how do you know that which that your head spinning in which direction sorry for these questions oh, no 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 you would okay when you're there you would feel it when you're there you would feel it because um, I absolutely feel the heads spinning. Okay. Yeah. You would, like, there's no mistake. You would feel it. You would feel it. You, you would feel, so you would feel either just the head, the top of your head spinning. If the, just the top of your head spinning, then you know that you're still in 3D. But when you feel like, it's the whole head is spinning. It's a very different um, feeling. Do you feel dizzy? No, you won't feel this dizzy. You will actually feel blissful. Mm. You will feel just out of this world blissful. Right. Like, 
and you would like how do you know it's just in your head or is connected to your heart is you actually feel that joy from your heart it's very different these are very different feelings i want to feel it i it, wish i <laughs> wish that for you as well thank you is it possible to to have this type of a connection during a, during a, a prolonged session not prolonged but after having meditated for a, a, an extended amount of time like a repeated meditations for is it possible to have this type of an experience yes absolutely okay I, um however how should i say it it okay from my own experience is is that um practice practice makes it easier so we're going to do like from the beginning to end this meditation today like all, all of us here we're going to do that together i don't guarantee that you will get there today but we'll we'll definitely give it a try however once we've done it once, then um, listen to this and just do this game from beginning to end. And the second time around, it will become easier. Um, so, yes. How should I say it? Well, in... Um, remember I mentioned that the your central meridian and your kundalini has to be strong so so strong so which means that you have to really um, practice that because kundalini maybe central meridian um, we don't have as much practice in, in strengthening our central meridian so maybe it's just me but i do find that uh, uh, um for myself the central meridian i need to practice more to get it to be strong and you want the central meridian to be strong because the central meridian is really the major pathway to bring in the universal energy like uh, kundalini will have the universal energy in it as well However, it, there's not as much. And most of it is really um, energy from earth within our body. So central, that's why central meridian, you, um, it, it takes practice to get the central meridian to be strong. If you've been meditating for a long time, then absolutely no problem. Your central meridian is, is probably no problem at all you can do this easily however if you haven't been a, an effort um, meditator then the central meridian is really the one that i would suggest to do um to really strengthen why because um I, i'm actually going to talk about so it's uh, the the reason why we can actually bring in this the universal truth is that um, the thalamus. So the thalamus is a gland within our body, and that the thalamus is actually the door to access information in the uh, of our unconscious mind. Usually, when the kundalini is working, it it is um, clockwise, and the central meridian is anti-clockwise. So because it is in the middle of our brain, so usually it is. Um, the the and it is anti-clockwise so it is spinning anti-clockwise however when we merge these two meridian together the central meridian will become clockwise so when the thalamus is clockwise it actually opens the trap door to make it possible for our conscious mind to talk with our unconscious mind so that's all 
that's that makes the big difference when the conscious mind and the unconscious mind um, can 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 talk together we that's what truth is about and when we do that with our consciousness being beyond the speed of light I don't want to to say that it has to be you know 16 inches actually I don't recommend 16 inches because if you if you go into 16 inches it's fourth dimension so it's not a very stable dimension so it's better to go to fifth dimension so 32 inches above or higher so when you when you do that, when your consciousness is beyond the speed of light, you have access to the um, universal energy, and it goes into your unconscious mind. Your conscious mind actually can translate all of that information in a language that you your conscious mind can understand. So that's why the conscious mind and the unconscious mind has to talk to, to each other because the unconscious mind's language is very dif different from the conscious mind's language. So conscious mind, we understand English. Unconscious mind can understand energy. So, and the information coming in through the central meridian is really energetic in nature, it's light in nature. Light with um, the, light is a vibration of energy that is pretty high. So when you open the trap door of the thalamus, your unconscious mind will be able to translate that and give you the truth. So that's why um, it is that, that's what we need to do in, in order to, um, merge kundalini and central meridian together make sure the the um the ec6 and six chakra is uh, are coherent and they are spinning clockwise so that and activate the thalamus as well so once you activate the thalamus then the unconscious mind and the conscious mind can start to talk to each other Is it doable? Yes. Um, in one sitting, um, first time out, mm, maybe not, unless you've been, unless you've been meditating for like regularly for a long time, it will, it will be definitely much easier. So I, I think I did have that experience. That's why I asked, because at one point I had, I was meditating I had meditated for a long time and regularly and, and, you know, I don't know, a couple hours a day. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, one day, it seemed like I was plugged into a database. And I just, just I, answer, I just, I just knew answers. I just knew everything. I just, there was just an opening, just a, mm -hmm. uh, an access to anything, to everything. And it was really, really amazing. And then life got in the way and I stopped meditating that much and blah, blah, you know, whatever. So yeah. you lose it? Did you yeah. lose it? Wow. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Lovely. So yeah. it doesn't mean if you get it, it doesn't mean you have it, right? You have to continue to do that to have it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But it's really fun at the time <laughs> oh yeah absolutely <laughs> it is fun it, it is very fun when you when you ask and you get questions uh, answered and and you know that you can trust that answer as well so yeah yes. okay wow interesting yeah, interesting, eh? <laughs> okay, let's get back to the material. So these three levels. So it's 
Um, so the difference, as far as I can, like for my own experience, it is really the amount of energy, like this, the, the strength of your central meridian and your Kundalini. So the, the more balanced and strong your central meridian and the Kundalini, then the easier it is for you to get to the universal consciousness where the whole head is spinning clockwise and you actually feel energy coming all the way into your heart space. And you kind of, you know, you know everything. You, you just have to think about it and you would um, get the answer. Okay, so let's start to talk more about how to access the real truth. So, um, so some of, so before I, I actually go into the step-by-step, step, let's just talk a little bit about what are some of the things that you have to really um, look into is to make sure that central meridian is balanced and it must be stronger than the Kundalini. So you would know that when you start um, like when when you start to breathe through the central meridian, you actually feel the the, the X the like EC eight. You can feel there is something above your head, and you actually feel the um, uh, the EC one, which is a little bit below your perineum. Like when when you feel that, and you when you go to each of those different energy center along the central meridian, you actually feel each of them. That's why um, in the, not last week, but the week before I, when I go through the central meridian, I actually go to make sure that each of the energy center is strong and you actually feel, you can actually feel that there is something there and it's spinning anti-clockwise. So, so just, um, do this, like really practice this, have the central meridian being balanced and is strong before you start to do the other things. So when the EC6, which is central meridian, the third eye from the central meridian and the third eye from the Kundalini, when they both become coherent, then you get a version of truth. But when you activate the EC6 and CK6 and also the thalamus, which allows you to um, unconscious mind to communicate with the conscious mind, then you actually can get the real truth because when your conscious mind and your unconscious mind talk to each other and you are um, tap into higher energy, then you will find out that you get the real truth is a much more reliable level of truth. So EC7 must be connected to 10 guardians and the consciousness must be above the speed of light, meaning that it is at least 16 in to connected to the plane of energy that is 16 inches above your head. Um, 32 inches is probably much more preferable. At first, I actually, um, would not suggest going over the, the fifth dimension. Why? Because the questions, because when you, when you want to know the truth, um, the questions that you ask, actually, if you don't ask the right questions or if you don't ask questions in in the right way, it's very 
easy to drop yourself down to, to 3D. For example, if you ask questions that is regarding time, then you drop down to 3D. So if you're asking, oh, um, should I go should I go meet up with you know so and so at 3 p.m. tomorrow? You already like that question alone already dropped you back into 3D because when you are above the speed of light, you are beyond um, time. So if you specify a time, which means that you are in order for you to get an answer of this level at this uh, that that's about time, you already drop out of it. So um, that's why I don't recommend going too high because you want to be like when you are too high, for example, um, if you go to six um, dimension, which is 64 inches above, it's the void. When you're in the void, you can barely think. It's like your mind start to be blank. So at that level, it's not easy to ask questions. And when you want to ask questions, it's, it actually drops you out of six dimension quite easily. And if you ask any questions about time, forget it. You're down, you're back down to 3D. That's why I suggest going to 5D first. And really, like before, think of your questions. Think of the questions that you're going to ask before you actually do the meditation. Because um, if you don't phrase, if you don't pick the questions that you want to ask, you it's uh, you you drop back down to three D very easily. So that's why I suggest going to five D which is like still below still below void because you still have a mind <laughs> when you're in in uh, 5d you can still think a little bit but when you are six dimension and up like when you're that like you can't really think it's you're beyond thinking you're really just being in those higher dimensions So, um, so that, I cannot ask how fast this can happen, right? I would suggest that you ask what is the best way to um, make this happen faster. Mm, okay. Ask that question rather than asking. Can I have it in six months time? Because if you mention the time, you back down to 3D. Ask a different question is, what can, what's, what can you do in order to speed things along? So that's the best, better question. Thank you. So it's really think about the questions. So right now, because we are, <clears throat> So we will be doing that meditation today. So think of the questions that you want to ask. I would suggest keep it simple today, maybe just one or two questions, like really pressing questions and really think about your questions. Phrase it in a way that won't drop you back down to um, 3D. Okay. Um, I would suggest questions like, um, am, I on the, am I on the right path? Or other questions may be, um, I can't really think of any good questions right now, but, you know. Can I ask what is the best way to get a lot of clients faster? Yeah, I believe so. Yep, I believe so. Yep, you can ask that. <clears throat> yep. Uh, can I ask, should I stay in the city? <laughs> uh, 
Um, sure. I'm just going to step away for like a minute, rejoin. Okay. Okay. Uh, the other uh, or uh, another way is, you know, um, okay. It really depends on um, don't always expect to hear an answer. Um, it may not be in words, but notice how you feel when you ask that question. When you ask any question, it's it really depends on your relationship with your unconscious mind, whether you have that, um, I would say, rapport. I think because I have, um, I've been doing channeling a lot, so it is easier for me to translate energy into words that my conscious mind can understand. However, not everyone is um, as well trained. So it really depends. Some people, they may be more kinesthetic, then you need to feel. So the, your answer may be in, like, in a feeling. Okay. Okay. So yeah. that, that, that applies to everybody as well, not, not just you. So. Okay, so when you ask question is to make it a, um, as broad as possible. Notice everything, because sometimes you may not hear an answer. You may not feel anything, but you may see a flash of a, like a vision. It may be just a vision. It may, may show you just a person or it may show you just um, an application. For example, TikTok or, you know, those, that's what I mean by an application when you're asking for what's the best way to grow your clients. So um, it may be visual, it may be audio, it may be feeling. So um, don't just limit the answer to one mode of communication. Consider all everything, um, like everything after you ask the questions, consider all of that a part of the answer. So. So I'm back if you were waiting for me, thank you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, any other questions before I go ahead? Okay, so let's just go over. So this is really the the step by step. This is really the step by step. <clears throat> so um, this is how uh, this is really what works for me. Um, now I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it. I'm just saying that this works for me. So, so that's what I presented. Um, so I would highly suggest that you stand while you're doing this. So, and then in breath, so just pure love and just imagine or just um, kind of visualize pure love coming in through the like eight, inches above your head into EC8 and then going all the way to EC, EC1, which is about four inches below the perineum. And the out breath is bringing in 0 0.01 frequency energy from the first chakra all the way to the top of your head. And so, and then five count in, five count out. 
So six times, which equals one minute and then just rest 15 seconds to give your body time to integrate the um, increase of vibration. And then do this five, maybe 10 cycles. And then connect with your guardian. So I would suggest that you, you all know who your guardian is and what direction do you? Do you all know? Yes, no, I, I have chief. I don't remember my guardian. Um, uh, do you know which direc direction? Mine on west. It's chief, but chief is not. Chief is west. Chief is north. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, direction is different for each person. Ah, okay. It depends. It depends on your birth, your birth time and date. So. Oh, I thought it was uniquely north. <laughs> no, no. Um, so, chief can be north. Or chief can be southwest. So it really depends on your birth. But it, so, okay. If you don't know, then don't worry. Just have the intention that you want to connect with your own guardian. Okay. Okay. Because, yeah. Just have just have that intention. If you know, it's it's even better. But if you don't know, don't worry. So because we in the end, what we want to do is actually connect to all ten guardians. So connect to your own guardian first with the back of your neck facing the or back of your head actually facing the guardians the direction of your guardian if, if my guardian this way i have to stay that way um no nah, no not if exactly neck, because back you can neck. actually just turn like this don't worry about it because you you just need to connect and then you're going to step forward and connect with all 10 guardians and once you connect it to all 10 guardians you can go back to face whatever direction you want okay, okay. so that's so that's that would um, be connecting with all 10 guardians and you will know that you have connected to the all 10 guardians because you would feel it. You would feel all, all of a sudden there's a big rush of energy coming in through the top of your head. And then you activate your central meridian and you repeat this command a couple more times until you feel the central meridian energy is strong. Okay, and then you do the Kundalini, you activate the Kundalini and you repeat this until you feel Kundalini is strong as well. And then I would suggest that you connect to the plane of energy. I actually suggest that you do it step by step. Connect to plane of energy that is eight inches and then 16 inches and then 32 inches above your head. And I would stop at 32 inches tonight. And if when you do it, practice it on your own, you can connect to as high as you prefer. That's, that's your preference. And then once you connect it to the plane of energy, then you are actually, um, your consciousness is beyond the speed of light. Then you have center meridian and Kundalini coherence activate and then you merge those these two and then you specifically activate the ec6 and the ck6 coherence activate and then you activate the thalamus okay thalamus activate and then because you've already done the, the whole work then give this process a name because once you give this process a name the next time, all you have to do is invoke the name and you would actually, it would give you a, a quick 
um, pull into this state of consciousness. Okay, once you're there, then you can ask questions. So I would suggest only do one or two for tonight. Okay, so any questions about this process so far? Are you gonna walk us? Yeah, I'm going to, we are actually going to do it. I'm just going mm -hmm. through the whole process so you know. So we're gonna ask one question and then wait and then ask another question or just for one meditation, one question? Ask one questions, wait for the answer. And if we have time, then ask the next questions. Okay. okay? As, as many questions as you can fit it in before I pull you guys out. <laughs> okay, ready? Okay. Ready, yeah, ready. Great. Right. Um,